The sound of hard drives spinning up is not that common these days, let alone a hard drive that is over 30 years old. Did the sound of this hard drive trigger some nostalgic memories for you? I hope it did, because it will make this video much more enjoyable. So why did I get a 3.5 inch 45MB hard disk that is double the height of those western digital IDE drives from the mid 90s? Yes, this Seagate hard drive with the model number ST157A has a total capacity of 45MB. It all has to do with how I come up with new ideas I can make videos about. Sometimes I get suggestions from you through the comments below my videos. Other times, a follow up video is required to dig a bit deeper into a specific topic. Then there are subjects I recall from my teenage years, most of which I had much weaker understanding of compared to today. And finally, there are accidental or unplanned videos, which pop up randomly during the research or preparation of other topics. Today's video is an unplanned video, like the first video I made talking about USB input devices slowing down retro PCs. My original plan was to install Windows 95 from floppy disks. But that could have also been achieved by using an SD to IDE adapter. It may seem pointless to get a hard drive that can store just a bit more than 32 floppy disks. Actually, this pack of sealed floppy disks can hold more data than the Seagate drive. Why bother with an old hard drive? Here are my reasons. First, there is the sound of mechanical hard drives that reminds us of those devices we used to store our data on just one or two decades ago. Another reason is my desire to trigger your nostalgic feelings in as many of my videos as possible, or introduce younger viewers to technology that is likely older than them. And finally, there is, of course, the actual reason why I wanted the real hard drive. Limitations. This hard drive does not have more than 45 megabytes of physical space available, and there is nothing anyone can do about it. Based on my research, it should be impossible to install Windows 95 on this hard drive because Windows 95 requires at least 55 megabytes for the minimal installation. I haven't tried this yet, but this is what I have seen online. So great, I got a hard drive I cannot use to install Windows 95. But of course, there was a solution for that. Back in those days when disk space was limited, operating systems came bundled with tools for compressing your hard drive, providing you with extra space that was necessary to continue performing tasks that would have otherwise been impossible. I am talking about Double Space and Drive Space, a disk compression software that was available for DOS and Windows and is integrated into the operating system. This is not the first time I cover some sort of space manipulation. We have already seen how Microsoft increased the size of their Windows 95 installation diskettes to 1.68 MB. I thought it would be interesting to see if Windows 95 can be installed on this hard drive using Drive Space. Sadly, most old hard drives are no longer in their best shape. Fully aware of the possibility to buy a defective drive, I decided to get a couple of old IDE hard drives. And as you might have already expected, one of those four hard drives seems to be defective. The Maxtor drive seems to have locked read and write heads. I am not sure if the freezer trick would bring this drive back to life, at least temporarily. As far as I am concerned, this drive is dead. Another drive seems to have bad sectors and two drives seem to be fully functioning. The two drives from Western Digital are in perfect working condition. There is one Kavia 2850 with 850MB of space and the other one a Kavia 11000 with 1GB of space. You might have figured out already that the last digits show the capacity in megabytes, but what is the first number for? The first number indicates how many magnetic platters are used. So this disk has only one platter while this disk has two platters. I am very happy that both Western Digital Drives work, but that leaves us with our Seagate Drive to be the one with the bad sectors. And this is why this video is unplanned. And no, we won't look into drive space today, we need to see if we can salvage this drive and if it is possible to use this drive for my actual project I had originally planned. You already heard this drive spin up at the beginning of this video. At first glimpse, all looks good. We can even boot from the disk on which someone left some data behind. However, when I run scan disk on the drive, we are greeted with a terrifying view. 
If you remember such a screen displaying bad clusters on your hard drive, I'm certain you started to get worried. Scandisk continued to scan the drive, identifying additional sectors with apparent issues and flagging them as bad. That is not good. We can for sure say that this drive is unreliable. Another issue is that with each bad sector, we are losing space that could be used for the Windows 95 installation. There is a finite number of bad sectors that we can tolerate. Once that limit is exceeded, it becomes impossible to provide sufficient space for Windows 95, even with the help of drive space. And although Scandisk seems to be doing its job, at some point it resigns claiming to have found physical damage on the drive. No matter if I restart the process, Scandisk quits always at the exact same position. Let's format the drive and start over. The data on this drive is useless to us anyway, and it seems that parts of the data were stored on sectors marked as bad by Scandisk. Surprisingly, the format process completed without issues. Our disk should now be empty, and if I am not mistaken, the bad sector recordings should also be gone. Now we have to retest the disk using Scandisk and let it mark the bad sectors again. To my surprise, the bad sectors we encountered at the beginning of the drive seem to have vanished. Do we have a fully working drive now? If you have seen my video about magnets and floppy disks, then you may have seen the bad sector that was created while exposing the disk to a magnet. Once the floppy disk was reformatted, the area where the bad sector was located could be used again. It wasn't a physical damage, but rather an issue with a track, which is created during formatting that may have been disturbed by the magnet. A similar issue seems to have been the case for this hard drive. Maybe the magnetic field of a track has weakened and is fixed after a fresh format. So far, all sectors seem to work. That's great news! With each working cluster we get valuable space that is required for a Windows 95 installation. And we are reaching the last 20% of the drive. Unfortunately no. Scandisk suffers and stops the process informing us that it has found physical damage. Same as before. I tried Scandisk another three times. All without success. Then I looked for other tools that could potentially fix those bad sectors, including C-tools from Seagate. None of the tools wanted to work with this IDE drive. Is this the end of the drive and my project? Creating a partition without the last 20% of the drive would remove about 10 MB of the drive, leaving us with only 35 MB. I have my doubts that this will be enough for drive space to create enough space for a Windows 95 installation. One last try with a very nice partitioning tool for DOS, Partition Magic 4 from PowerQuest. It has a nice graphical user interface and does provide a few nice features, including the test of bad sectors. Maybe Partition Magic will do a better job scanning and marking bad sectors. Unsurprisingly, Partition Magic went through the first 80% of the drive without issues. But at 84%, things got ugly. This is the area where Scandisk did not continue. Hoping for a different outcome, I let Partition Magic do its job. Each time one of the read-write heads tried to access the seemingly damaged sectors, I could hear how the drive gave up, resetting the heads and trying again. After about 10 minutes, the process continued for a bit. Until we got stuck again. At least we're making some progress. Another 5 minutes later and partition magic completed the process. Unfortunately, we cannot see a graphical view of the drive, how many and where bad sectors are located. For this, we have to restart Scandisk. I'm curious how the surface of this drive looks now. Look at this! Partition Magic did manage to mark bad clusters throughout the entire drive. Let's see if Scandisk is now able to complete a full scan of the remaining sectors without getting stuck at the location we have seen before. Scandisk did find a couple of sectors that seem to have an issue. Maybe those sectors did work after a couple of tries using Partition Magic. But I'd rather have Scandisk flag everything suspicious as bad. This should ensure that any data stored on the remaining surface is somewhat reliable which is critical when using drive space. The threshold for flagging bad sectors seem to be a lot lower in Scandis compared to PowerQuest's partition magic. The final overview of the drive's surface does look a lot better than sacrificing about 20% of the available space by creating a 35 MB partition. We are probably losing just a few kilobytes instead. 
The good news is that a second scan of the drive reveals no issues. Are you aware of any tools that claim to be able to repair bad sectors? This would be the perfect drive to test such a tool. And although I highly doubt that any single bad sector on this drive can be fixed by software, let me know your suggestions in the comments. Anyway, after a few more scans, ScanDisk finished without detecting any errors. The question is, how much space did we lose to bad sectors? After formatting the drive and accounting for all sectors, we ended up with a total free capacity of 44,546,048 bytes. That are 21,751 allocation units with a size of 2,048 bytes each. Now, after marking the bad sectors, we are left with 44,496,896 bytes. So, we did lose 49,152 bytes to bad sectors, which means there are 24 bad allocation units with a size of 2,048 bytes each. Now I can start with a project I had originally planned, installing Windows 95 from floppy disks to this hard drive. I will use the diskettes from this sealed pack to create a set of Windows 95 installation disks and see how far we will get. But I have a feeling that my next video will be about drive space, which will hopefully allow me to install Windows 95 on this hard drive. Let me know if you have used double space or drive space back then. How was your experience? Did you lose all your data because the compressed volume got corrupted? I'm really looking forward to hear your stories. And this is all I have for you today. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. A big thanks to my Patreon members for your support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.